Welcome to the TSG Multimedia Podcast for December of 2022. We're sponsored this month by the TSG Train Crew on Patreon. Thank you very much. I'm your host, John Abaticola. And as far as I know, this is the longest running train-related podcast going strong since January of 2010. Welcome. Now, this month we were fairly busy, so let's get straight to it. This is Saturday, November 5th, and the South Bay Historical Railroad Society, which is in the building behind us, uh, is having their open house, their fall open house today and tomorrow. I mentioned it on the last podcast that actually came out this morning. But as you can see, it's there behind me, and we're going to go in, and I'm going to show you some of the stuff that they do at the open house. Hey, all right, so as I was just over here talking to you about the event, I came across someone that I know from Facebook, but I don't think I've met in person, or if I have, I don't remember. This is John, the other John. Hello. Hi, John. What do you think about this event here today? Well, this is wonderful. You know, glad they're having this, giving a little bit of history of one of the one of the best forms of transportation still around to this day. It's been around for centuries. Absolutely. Did you have a favorite thing? Did you go down and see the tower? Yes, I saw the tower. It showed a ton of history on how we keep these trains rolling each day. Excellent. Hey, thanks for coming on. Yes, no problem. Take care, guys. Hi, this is another example of you never know who you'll run into. Uh, This guy behind me was with John that we just talked to a minute ago. This is Gabe. He's actually a local guy to the area. Mm -hmm. And we were just talking and he was telling me that he actually volunteers. What was it as a- As a volunteer station host. So basically what I, so basically I work for a volunteer organization. What's it called? The Host Association of California. And we work in conjunction with Amtrak. So you'll see a lot of people wearing like, or at least dressed in professional attire, guiding people to which trains or which buses to take. But we mainly help those that are taking the long distance trains. Whereas because I'm a volunteer host in San Jose, I help those that are with the Starlight, but I help those with other trains because I know a lot of the conductors on other trains. Like even on this train, I know who the conductor is and I know a lot of conductors out here. So we're here still at the South Bay Historical Railroad Society's Fall Open House. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to ask you, Gabe, what's Mm -hmm. your favorite thing about the open house here? Oh, there's too many to count, but I think my favorite thing about the open house is that for starters, it's very close by. I've been coming to this museum every Saturday since I was a teenager. Um, And also my favorite thing, I think my very favorite thing about it is that I get to see a lot of people from all walks of life, make new friends, because I'm a people person and I can't be quiet sometimes. Well, we're talking. Seeing a lot of trains (laughs) (laughs) and seeing a lot of trains. And also this was a perfect event event because I work down the street from this uh, museum. So it makes it easier for me to just pop in, see a lot of people and then go to work later on. And I love, I've loved trains since I was a small kid. That charger was really loud. So I hope we heard all that. Yeah, even if you didn't, no worries. I I don't mind talking about it as millions of times. I explain the same thing over and over and again to a lot of people. One of the funny things is that you've been coming to here mm-hmm. for the past several years every weekend. So we've probably met before, and I just don't remember. Yeah, I remember. I think we may have met once before but in the museum. You, but did you introduce yourself? Because that's how I would have remembered. Or did you just say, oh, hey, it's John? Because that happens Yeah, a lot. I think that's probably how it was. But yeah, That happens a lot. I, I was talking about this. Uh, I don't mean to take up your time, Gabe. Oh, but I, I wouldn't I'm going to be this here is, a, a while anyway, okay. so don't worry. I was talking about this on a recent TSG Live Talking Trains show. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't remember if I was talking to Michelle or if it was the last time when I was talking to Chris, but people come up to me all the time. They're like, oh, hey, John, good to meet you. And and I have no idea. They know who I am because they see me on this channel all the time. (laughs) And that actually just happened here today with this guy. And I told... Guilty as charged. Right? But I told whoever I was talking to about this recently that the next time it happens, I'm just going to say, who are you? And I did it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> for it re- sure it really put you on the spot too well, either way i mean hey there could be worse <laughs> all right well thanks for coming on oh my pleasure always a pleasure so the south bay historical railroad society has an open house twice a year and during the open house they open everything including the library the tower 
their private rail car that's under restoration, both N scale and HO scale layouts. Also, the waiting room is open with a display of vintage uniforms. It's pretty cool. Maybe the highlight of the show is the general store. The general store has just everything you could possibly imagine that's railroad related or model train related. And one of the best things about it is that it has great bargains on rolling stock like these, five bucks a car. And I've mentioned this before, this is what you go to these kind of shows for so that you can pick up inexpensive models instead of weathering your good expensive models. It's a great way to practice without ruining something that you've paid a lot of money for. So it's a great time. It's one of the best train related events in the South Bay. It happens every April and November. So if you missed this one, you can come next April and it's just a great time. All right, so we're uh, just about done here for now. Uh, Sydney pulled a, I think, two hour shift in the library for this open house. And I just got recruited. Thanks, thanks Amtrak. I just got recruited to do some running on the end scale layout tomorrow. So we'll see if that happens. Uh, there's some other stuff up in the air for tomorrow, but if we can, uh, we'll certainly be back to do that. And in the meantime, let's watch this Amtrak train depart. That's it for now. We're back at the South Bay Historical Railroad Society today to help run trains during the open house. This wasn't something I had planned to do, but it turned out that one of the volunteers here yesterday who's running the open house asked us if we could bring some stuff and run it today because they were a little short-handed on the end scale side. So we decided to come down today and run the trains for a couple hours. So we'll see how that goes. We're doing something today. We drove out to a place called Yuba City to do a layout video of the layout that you see behind us here. And I say us because I'm standing with someone here, you may have noticed. Everywhere I go when I'm doing these layout videos, people are like, hey, you know the Vargas Brothers? Hey, you know the Vargas Brothers? Oh, they do amazing work. And I would always tell people, I don't know the Vargas Brothers, but I expect to meet them someday. And today is that day. This is Armando and this is Dan. These are the Vargas Brothers, the fabulous Vargas Brothers that do all kinds of really cool work on layouts, including some of the work that we've seen here today at this layout. Uh, Dan, since you seem to be the spokesperson, okay. what would you say about what you do? Let people on the world in the world yeah. know. Yeah, well, I wanted to say that this is a very personal to us because we take it as if somebody was doing something for us, so we give them our best, even not sleeping. <laughs> for you guys to come over and video the layout that's how much we care and we never lose that i think when you lose that touch you shouldn't be in business right so we're very service oriented and we really care and we become friends with all of our clients that's more important than doing the actual layout and i can attest to the fact that they didn't sleep because list trying to record these guys talking <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's okay. very hard you guys could try it if you sleep an hour and a half and see what happens <laughs> <laughs> well, to, to add on to that, the reason I forgot to start my video this morning was we were leaving like at six. I don't think it was even, there was no sun yet. Mm -hmm. So we got up early too. So yeah, so you guys are the yeah. same. So that's what we did today. And uh, we're looking forward to some rest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Me too. Uh, 
Oh. On, on another note, I'm very proud because I had good friends, Robert Lopez and Mike uh, Garrigan, which told me about John. And I've always told, wanted to meet him. So it's been great to meet him and his yeah. wife. Yeah. It's been a pleasure. So yeah. I've heard great things about him. He says he's far more than we thought. We he's hope a good this friend. opens the door for a lot more layout videos. Oh, like, and it could. A good yeah, friendship. That'd be yeah. cool. The friendship will be great. On November 15th, we didn't do anything because it was my birthday. And I wanted to rest. So I want to thank everybody who sent cards and money and donuts and food and just, it was really amazing. Uh, no, actually, what I came on here to talk about was on November 16th. We had the next edition of TSG Live Talking Trains. That's the monthly program that I do with Michelle on the third Wednesday of every month. And on this episode, we welcomed Patrick Michael Carnahan. Patrick is a very talented artist, and I say artist in every sense of the word. Not only does he do painting, but he does photography. He does music. It was just a really great program. And if you missed this show, it's available on the replay. So go back and check it out. Hi, we're going to do something today, and it's kind of not entirely related to the channel per se, but it is train related. So I thought I'd come on here and mention it real quick. We're going to the Niles Canyon Railway's train of lights. And this is something that I've seen many times, but I've never ridden it. As long as I've been a member at the Pacific Locomotive Association, which is 10 or 15 years, I've never ridden the train of lights before. So tonight we're going to go do that, but we're doing it as a family thing. So I'm not so sure I'll be posting a lot of updates from there, but I will try to maybe get some pictures or videos of the train so you can see what it's like all lit up. It's a really uh, cool sight to see in the dark canyon. <laughs> All right, so we found some seats, and you can see we dressed warm because it's pretty cold out in the canyon tonight. So this is the longest train that they run in Niles Canyon at, at any time. If you, I'm looking up toward the front, which is sort of westbound. We're about to take off right now, but you can see that we can see as far yeah. As far as the eye can see, we can't see the front of the train this way. And as far as we can see the other direction, you can't see the end of the train that way either. It was very long. Thank you for all. I just caught a glimpse of the front of the train way down there. So we're close to the front of the train. I think we're about four or five cars back. And we're about to go through the yard. So that'll be right side yard. That'll be the next thing you see. So you can see it's really dark out here at night. But they do have some lights. I haven't seen where they're storing the 2479 yet. I, we probably already passed it and I just didn't see it.
this diverging route to the left here, if you can see it, is the southern side or southern leg of the Y that they have here now. And if you remember, we've talked about how they're going to have the old Lenzen roundhouse and turntable and such down here. And what you're seeing right now is actually the turntable from San Jose that came up here with the 2479 equipment. So that turntable right there is going to be installed down in this area eventually. So it's very exciting actually because that's a piece of history that lived in San Jose for many, many years. And then down here, if you look sort of off in the distance, that's downtown Niles. And I suspect that if we were here during the day, we would probably be able to see other pieces of the equipment that was moved up from San Jose recently for their ongoing project of creating a part of their museum out here at the Niles Y. So there's a lot of really exciting things happening at Niles Canyon Railway these days. And it's very cool to see some of that historic assets that were transferred up here recently already in place, waiting to be installed. On the return trip to Sanol, I ran into some friends and had some great conversations. And I just want to mention quickly, as you look at some of the other decorations in these cars, that if you have a heritage railway near where you live, please get out and support them if they're doing holiday things, because I know, at least in the case of the Niles Canyon Railway, that the train of lights generates almost all of the revenue they use to operate the railroad for the rest of the year. And now for December's Catches of the Month. This first shot comes from Joey Butzik. It's a nighttime long exposure of Amtrak's Lakeshore Limited heading west to Chicago at about 70 miles per hour. It was taken in the town of Warners, New York at about 10 p.m. and it was a 25 second exposure at ISO 200 F stop 8 on his Nikon D610. Yes, he provided all that information. Thanks, Joey. This next shot was taken by Steve Sweat at a crossing in Ottawa, Illinois. This is BNSF 3687, a ET44C4 locomotive. Thanks, Steve. And finally, we have these shots of what people are calling the Union Pacific Hospital Train. These come from Kyle Burkholder. Kyle took these shots from the Lock and Dam Visitor Center at the Rock Island Arsenal, looking across the Mississippi River. The train was traveling across something called the Government Bridge, and the consist is being donated by the Union Pacific Railroad to the Railroading Heritage of Midwest America. The RRHMA is going to be restoring this equipment to working order. These pictures were taken on November 19th. Thank you very much, Kyle, for sending these in. They're very relevant to an important event that recently took place. If you have catches of the month that you'd like to share, you can send them to podcast at tsgmultimedia.com. Be sure you own the photos and include all the what's, when's, and where's of the shots you send in. And now for this month's program schedule. On December 7th, we have Vintage Southern Pacific Steam Films. On the 9th, we have a Product Spotlight. On the 10th, it's the Eskale New York Central Valley Division. This is a layout tour with Ed Loazzo. On the 14th, Union Pacific 4014 goes for a ride on the turntable in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Then on the 16th, we have another Product Spotlight. On the 17th, it's the return of Chasing Trains. This time, we go to Roaring Camp in Santa Cruz. Then on December 21st at 4 p.m. Pacific Time, it's TSG Live, talking trains with Michelle and me. On the 23rd, we have another product spotlight. And then on the 24th, we have vintage Western Pacific films. On the 28th, we have vintage Sacramento Northern films. On December 30th, we have one more product spotlight for this year. And then on the 31st, that's right, we have five Saturdays this month. It's the Central Coast Railroad Festival video. This was a program about that event that we filmed earlier this year. So that's it for this time. And before I wrap this podcast and put it under the tree, I want to thank you all for your continued support. 
None of this happens without the best viewers on YouTube. You know, with so many highlights from the past 11 months, and many more great times ahead of us next year, I think it's an appropriate time to reflect on what we're grateful for. I'm grateful for all the amazing people that we get to meet, and all the things that we get to see, and of course, for being able to share it with you here. I'm also grateful to everyone watching for taking an interest in those things. I'd like to wish you all a great rest of the holiday season, regardless of whatever holidays you celebrate. And if you don't celebrate any holidays, have a great month anyway. I'd also like to make a special note of thanks to the TSG train crew on Patreon. If you know someone on the crew, thank them for helping support the content that you enjoy. Or better yet, join us on the TSG train crew yourself by going to patreon.com slash TSG Multimedia. It's as cheap as two bucks a month, and it helps us bring the content that you enjoy to your TV, your computer, or whatever you watch us on. Thanks again, and I'll see you soon.